I'm usually the official, and I don't mind that because uh, I, I believe if you're wrong, you're wrong and strong. Just commit to it. They can be mad at you, but that's life. Uh, was today's practice a little bit longer than normal? I'm just wondering the reason for that. Oh, the, uh, we did a lot of sprints today. I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, we had two yesterday, so we wanted to make sure that we, we were able to teach in the morning, get a little bit carryover as we went live in the evening. Uh, today was just more, let's get up and down, uh, kind of apply some of the things we tried to implement yesterday, but in more live segments. Uh, and just being prudent with you know the amount of workload we're putting on these guys. And they've been working hard for the past three plus weeks. So just being mindful of that, understanding the load at this point, in the preseason, we've got time, but we also want to work efficiently. Yeah, and also, um, Brad, I think, mentioned yesterday that you guys are going to be doing less switching this year. Yes. Uh, I'm just wondering what the thinking or the philosophy behind that is. Just, uh, I think it's just more schematic choice. Um, I've had some degree of success doing things a certain way. Um, other teams do it, and they're, they're very good at it. And I think there's a place for it, and there, there's times we're going to do that. But... Um, it kind of goes back to making sure we lay the foundation um, and then adjust accordingly. Is having a room protector like Daniel Gafford factor into that? Like when you have, a, or, or is there something about the personnel that you think allows them to not have to switch? Not necessarily. I think it's regardless of what you're doing, it's how you're doing it. Um, you know, if you're doing it uh, with technique, proper technique, you do it with effort, you're, you know, you're physical. Um, I think it bodes well, regardless of what that is. Um, I think for us, the, in pick and rolls specifically, we want to impact the ball. Um, and you do that, yeah, you, you're exposing yourself to some degree, but we're making the uh, dominant ball handler, in most cases, make an earlier decision. I want to ask you about rebounding. Um, it wasn't a strength of this team a couple of years ago, and then last year it was kind of fixed. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, one player who left this offseason is one of the greatest rebounders in the yeah. position in NBA history. Uh, so what do you think are going to be kind of the keys and priorities to making sure you guys can rebound down the ball? So beyond just the mentality, I think it's also, uh, you know, a focus is something we have to continue to harp on. Uh, it's not just on Daniel Gafford or Montrez or TB when he comes back. It's not just the bigs. It's all five. And they just have to ha have that mindset of, you know, we're not ball watching. Shot goes up, you turn, you find a body, you hit first. Um, so it's just a mindset as far as a collective unit. And it, it's not on one person specifically. Wes, we talked to Spencer a little bit about kind of the uh, versatility in this game, capable of shooting, capable of passing, capable of shooting numbers, when he's healthy and everything like that. Obviously, he defends. What, I guess, have you seen from his game? Was there anything in particular that makes you feel like, oh, yeah, I'll be able to use that. I can, I can work with that system. No, I would agree with all those. I mean, he, he's a very uh, dynamic offensive player. Um, he's shown in something he probably aren't aware of because you don't, you know, you haven't seen him in a while, but very good playmaker. Uh, he, he's a very cerebral player, understands the time, the score, uh, playing two for one situations. Um, so having him on and off the ball, uh, he can also orchestrate offense for some pe some other people. Uh, so it's a great weapon to have. And is he all good to go with everything? I think when we asked him on the media day, he said the training staff had him just cautious that he should be good. To oh, he, he looked great today. Anyway, the whole practice. So I think he's, they're still, you know, mindful of where he is in his uh, recovery, but there are, there are very few, if any, limitations. Did anybody else not go, or was everybody else on board? No, every, everybody else was on board. Um, there's been some talk about Benny Lafia being a secondary playmaker, mm -hmm. and um, there's been other players that have kind of come through here before that, that was said, and it's, it seems like it might be a little bit easier said than done sometimes, mm -hmm. but is your experience in Denver with Nikolai Jokic, who was a Obviously, a unique player in that regard. Do you think that helps? And then, how do you kind of see it working with him? I mean, it's certainly uh, advantageous if, if you have guys out there with skill level. And I think we do. Um, that, that flexibility, diversity we've talked about allows you to move guys around and play different positions. So you're not necessarily locked into spots. It's, uh, it's not this guy has to be in this particular spot. It's just those four guys, five guys, fill those areas and let's play out of concepts. So now they understand the two, three-man relationships. It's not a play. Um, they're just reading, reacting as far as what the defense gives them. That makes it that much harder to guard. And uh, what has been your impression of Isaiah Todd so far? I know there's a lot of players out there. Mm -hmm. what uh, you know what? He's had good stretches. He's had those rookie stretches like deer in the headlight. Um, and that's to be expected. 
Um, cause we're throwing a lot at, at a guy, uh, the pace of play, the physicality, um, we're moving him around from position to position. So all those things, um, aside from just the nerves of your rookie season, <laughs> it's probably, you know, weighing on him at times, but he's responded well. Um, and he's shown good, mo uh, moments. Um, and then there's teaching moments where he's just, you know, that's the mark of a young player trying to figure it out. Wes, I feel like when you talk about it, you need a, a lot of guys come in, but very low key measured everything and kind of try to sit that down and just like a different presence, I guess. What, from, from that point of view, what does he kind of add to the group that you have trying to rely on for a lot of that kind of stuff? Well, I think overall energy has been, been great. You know, the one thing Trez brings is it's the vocal energy. And it's, uh, it's, it's welcomed because sometimes the gym is quiet. You know, we preach, uh, you know, that level of communication, not just from player to player or player to coach, uh, from coach to player, but on the floor. I think it's uh, the more they communicate, good, bad, or indifferent, you know, that allows them to be on the same page. This is going to follow up real quick, not on the, uh, specifically on the switching stuff, but at this point, you got the things that you kind of want to lay down, your foundation, versus you know the the specific talents or specific players that you have I'm, I'm just curious right now how much do you adjust to the players that you have or is this now kind of like let's lay the foundation and then we'll get to that point at some point yeah i think when when laying that foundation you have to take your personnel into uh context um you last thing you want to do is put your players uh, in situations where they are a uncomfortable or don't feel they have the opportunity to have success so we've kind of laid that out prior to even implementation as far as doing these things, keeping in mind our, our personnel. Um, and then once we kind of get those things in, we'll start to make adjustments. And those will be more game plan. Um, once we get into competitive situations, um, those also will be some of the checklist items that we talked about yesterday. Hmm? All right, Coach, we're going to take uh, one last question from Zoom. Uh, Neil? Hey, Coach, uh, you talked, you know, about the sense of urgency that you want guys to bring to start the season. How do you balance, you know, that happening versus, you know, it's a new system and every a lot of new guys coming in. How do, how do you balance that and but still trying to keep expectations high? Right. Well, I think that sense of urgency is a, is a mindset. It's not necessarily we have to rush to get everything in or we're going to feel pressure to check everything off those checklists before October 5th you know, our first preseason game, or even before October 19th, um, it's going to take some time. I think that sense, sense of urgency is more in uh, where are we, are, where are we competitively? Um, that we're not just going to think, okay, we can skip our way into the season. We have to hit the ground running. We have to uh, play with a purpose. Uh, we want to maintain that competitive edge from the beginning of the preseason. Those other items we'll, we'll get to, but it's, it's our mentality as far as how we want to approach and how we want to play. That's a great group of guys, man. We got a lot of uh, tough competitive guys, guys that's willing to learn. Um, you know, a lot of young pieces mixed in with some guys that are, you know, labeled as veterans. Um, you know, me, myself, excluded as one of those guys. Um, but, you know, I really don't think we really have any, like, veterans on the team. You know, when you look at veterans, you got guys who are in, uh, you know, 12, 13 years in their career. You know, we don't have any guys like that. You know, I think our guy um, that has the most years on our team is Brad, man, and he's only, like, 28, man. So we got a great group of guys, man. Um, we came in, got out there, uh, got a great group of work yesterday, a uh, great group today. Um, so just looking to continue to keep building on that, really. What your experience has been in Louisville? How important are stacking days? Um, days? Every day. Every day is important with stacking the positive days because you don't get that many days where you practice and, you know, be able to be on the court to go over the game plan, well, to develop guys, you know. So every day that you can stack on a good day, um, it's always going to be a positive. You try not to have any setback days or any negative um, step of days because at the end of the time, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not really going to do you anything good. You know, we're already limited on time when we get in the gym and, you know, be able to go over play, develop, and, you know, just work on our game, you know, because the season's so long, um, so many different games are played, and, you know, now travel and with capacity going back to full with fans, you know, this is probably the first time we're close to a, a normal season. So. Oh, Donzel said that uh, he doesn't envision guys doing a lot of switching on defense, uh, maybe with this team previously they would have. Um, what does that mean to you as a defender to know that you know, there's not going to be as, as much switching and some other people? Um, I mean, that's coach's game plan. I mean, we're going to carry it out to a T. Um, we're going to get, you know, do the things that we need to do in order to make sure that we don't cause ourselves to have to start switching. I mean, that's what coach's game plan, in, uh, game plan is, and that's what we're going to carry it out to a T. 
it's not nothing personal for anybody. That's just what he feels that works best for us as a team. And um, every year you rank pretty highly in box outs. You'll track that. Mm -hmm. um, NBA. Um, what's kind of the key to a, a good box out? And, and what do you think needs to be the one of the best in the NBA for uh, I mean, honestly, man, I'm, I'm not the guy that, you know, uh, was blessed with a lot of high edges, other guys that put us in the position, man. So I just try to use my physicality and to be able to put a body on guys and just, you know, do the little things to be able to keep them off the glass so they don't give them second, third chances uh, for the team. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not blessed with the height that, you know, every other big has, you know, but it doesn't take um, anything, to, you know, to compete and play with heart, um, play with determination, have a will to want to, you know, be able to put a body on somebody. So, you know, ultimately you're doing the goal to, you know, help the team seal the defensive rebound and, you know, not, not give them extra chance, uh, extra chance shots. I mean, it's already played for 24 seconds and then it's tough to have to get them another shot and go for another 14. Guys, you talked the other day that you really want to be one of the vocal guys. I think you will be one of the vocal guys. With the, like you said, lack of kind of 14 old heads in the group, how do you see that for where you are in your career? Are you kind of like, okay, this is going to be a challenge for me. This is going to make me grow and, and kind of be one of those more experienced guys. Or how do you look at that? Um, I mean, it's just a, a growing process, it's a learning experience. Um, I think just in general, our whole team is a fairly new team, um, all the way, from, you know, from top to bottom, uh, starting with coach. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's a growing process for everybody. Um, me, myself, I was just able to be around um, a lot of programs, a lot of organizations throughout even college where, you know, I was just able to learn from guys like that. Um, I went to Louisville, played on the coach Patino, had, you know, older guys in front of me, Peyton Siva, guys like that, and I went to Houston. Another veteran team, James Harden, Trevor Rizzo, guys like that, uh, Mike Beasley. I mean, every team I've been around guys that, that has, like, legit veteran guys on the team who's been in the league for a multiple amount of years. Um, and then I was just blessed to be able to link up with Lou, and it just took off from there. So I've been around guys who, you know, know how to carry that stuff in that leadership role, where, whether it's a big role or whether it's, you know, playing the sidelines, but also being vocal and helping um, the younger guys throughout the process. And obviously have a unique perspective down at center, but You've seen them play together a lot so far. What do you notice about how Brad and Spencer kind of work off each other? Um, they're two different type of players, honestly. Um, uh, Brad is a guy who you know is not really um an ideal, you know, need this, need that. You know, he's a guy that just plays and gets after it, and you know, no matter what the circumstances are, um, plays in front of him. You know, he he overcomes them, he works at it, and he you know flourishes in it really. Um, Spence is, you know, he likes situations, you know, he likes different spots on the floor. He likes to, you know, um, different type of things he's looking at when he's coming off of a pick and roll or if he's able to get a switch and things like that. Um, so it's just two different type of players. I mean, but you're going to have that with anybody on the team. I don't think nobody on our team has the, you know, complete same exact game as anybody else. So you're going to take some time and it's going to take time to have to learn how to play with those guys, you know, and I feel like that's for everybody. All right, we'll go over to Zoom, uh, Neil. Hey, Montrez, I'm curious, you know, you have two younger centers, you know, in the rotation with you, Daniel and Thomas Bryant. I think, you know, one of them said that you kind of passed on to them. And you, you know, you really got to lock in in this week with some of your advice. Do you have any other advice that you think that you can be able to pass on to them to help their grow their games and develop their games? Um, it's going to be a process. This year is definitely going to be a process. It's going to be a learning process for all of us. And uh, we're going to have ups, we're going to have downs throughout the whole year. But um, I mean, honestly, it's not words of encouragement just for them. It's words of encouragement for our team, man. We're going to have to go through a lot of growing processes, both up and down, like I said, you know, but we're going to have to stick together. We're going to have to, you know, make sure that we lean on each other even more in those type of times. We can't start pointing the finger at one another. It's not just one person's fault. I mean, we're, like I said, this is going to be a learning process from everybody, from top to bottom, coach all the way down to the last player on our roster, man. So we're going to do it together. And as long as we know that we're going to do it together, I think we're going to be just fine. Appreciate it. Christos. Hey, Montrezl. Hope you're doing well. In those couple of days in uh, the training camp, what did you learn about your new team? Um, I mean, we haven't been out there that long. I mean, yesterday was kind of like our first day. Um, we had two yesterday, so... Um, it's still a learning process overall. Um, we got a lot of good players on our team, a lot of young pieces. And like I said, it's mixed in with some, you know, players that's kind of considered as veteran type players. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's going to continuously be my, you know, constant quote throughout the whole year, man. This is going to be a learning process, man, because we have almost a complete new team. Um, I think 
you know, Brad spoke on it when we met up um, having the team dinner uh, the very first day, man. I think him and maybe, you know, one or two other guys is like the, the long guys who've been here throughout this organization for the whole hall. I mean, and the same thing with coaches and some of the front office and, and he spoke on that. So, um, like I said, he's a guy who's been here from, you know, top to bottom um, ever since he came into the league, man. And that's going to be the head of our snake and we're just going to do everything that we can to be able to just compliment him and, you know, just make things easier for him. And also, how you approach uh, this the next season, and what is your mindset to be as a wizard player? Um, the same mindset I have every year, brother. Just come in, look able to work, look able to get better, and do everything I can to help will my team to a win, man. Um, this isn't about me. This isn't a me season. This isn't nothing to go out and prove, man. This is another season where I'm blessed to be a part of an NBA organization, and you know it's a team that wants me, and I want to just go out there and do anything I can to help them be able to win games and, you know, make a run in the playoffs. Simple as that. Just can we start with um, going back to last night, playing pickup for the first time in camp. Well, I said it was competitive and there was some high spirit. How would you assess it? Um, yeah, no, I, I definitely think it was. I think, um, you know, a lot of our styles promote, uh, you know, defense rotations, flying around, um, ball moving on offense, been, I think everybody uh, definitely first game, first day of camp, sorry, uh, is going to have that high energy, high intensity. I think um, the, the best part was there was a lot of carryover uh, to today. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to try to build on each day, get 1% better, and, and hope that the energy and the, the flow stays high. I asked Montrez about stacking positive days. Yeah. Just from your experience through camp, is that really a key to kind of get off to a good start during the regular season? Yeah, I think so. Um, when you look at what's going on the, the first, uh, or not first, but the last three weeks or so with, with guys having a collective buy-in, I think coming in a pretty good uh, shape and things like that, it allows you to start stacking those days because, you know, if guys aren't in shape or haven't been doing their due diligence over the summer, then, you know, you, you get more injuries, you get more, you know, guys taking days off or having to miss different practices, et cetera. Like we haven't really had that, you know what I'm saying? Um, Everybody's pretty much been a full go for the most part. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been great to see. I want to say, you were talking about the treatment. Um, obviously not your first ACL situation. Yeah. What did you, was it easier this time around to go through it? Do you feel like you took something different from it, having to go through the whole recovery process again? Far easier, far easier. Um, you know, I've, I've told this story a lot. Like, you got to remember, like, I was in college um, and I tore – Fully tore my ACL, I tore my lateral meniscus, my medial meniscus, which both required uh, repairs. Um, for people that you know know that type of uh, recovery, it further complicates things because I was on crutches for seven weeks, so the atrophy in my leg was crazy. I also tore my MCL as well in that same injury, so you know I was on crutches for seven weeks. Um, you know the atrophy in your leg is crazy, like. It's a it's a completely different process. I mean, when you first come back walking, like you walk like you have a peg leg, and it's just it's it's a not fun experience. Um, this one obviously has was a partial ACL tear. It still required obviously the the surgery, um, but I mean I was walking on the fourth or fifth day, so you know there's not much atrophy occurs in in that time period. Like you get a little bit, and obviously you have the the swelling from the surgery and different things that you deal with, which are just par for the course in any type of operation, but uh, four or five days versus seven weeks, um, just kickstarting your recovery. And then obviously having all the NBA resources, credit the Brooklyn staff and, you know, for, for starting the process, then you got Fabrice Barron's, Mike G, Craig out in LA, like carrying the torch on. And then the diligence of the wizard staff now is as the torch kind of been passed to them and, and just all the, just, just resources are just different. You know, I mean, when, something happens, like I can contact my PT immediately. And if I'm on the other side of the country, I can fly them out. Like when you're, you know, like when, when, when you're in college and you're, you're like, uh, we just, we going to ice this or like, <laughs> you know, what are we going to do? So it's, it's, a, it's a completely different process. And that's no shot at obviously any college in Colorado specifically. I love them, but it's just, this is different. Yeah. Um, you, you talked to us the other day a lot about how you do your job is obviously partially to make things easier for Brad to aid him and things like that. What about coming here now that you know the organization a little bit more, have gotten to kind of see the style of everybody, what do you feel like about this organization fits you well and what you want to accomplish in kind of your career aside from the, we got to get Brad to sign this super max thing? Yeah, um, and, and let me preface those comments as well too. I mean, my job in general 
as a point guard, as a leader, is to make the game easier on all of them. You know, obviously we, we highlight Brad because he's our best player. Like he scores 30, so how can I help it be better? But I, that's how I view the point guard position. You know, everybody has their own viewpoint on it. But when I was kind of breaking down the game, like the reason why I said I want to learn first is because that allows me to then make the game easier on them because people have their own style, right? And I'd rather adapt to them in a lot of ways than them adapt to me because I'm going to have enough possessions to where like I'm going to be able to get aggressive and get selfish in certain moments. You know what I mean? Everybody's not going to have that opportunity. You know, like it's, it's going to be hard on, you know, maybe the eighth and ninth man to come in and I just be like, yo, just, just go stand in the corner. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Like the more I can promote that confidence in him, I'm still going to get my possessions where I break off a play and go shoot the ball. Like that's going to be part of, part of the game, part of the process. Um, what I, take most from the Wizards organization and what I love most is just feeling loved. Um, you know, I think everybody in life, regardless of relationship, whether it's business-wise, romantic, paternal, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like you, you want to feel uh, loved and valued and, and respected, I think, especially in terms of male relationships, right? You want to feel respected. Um, and that's been afforded to me here, unlike uh, really any NBA stop that I've had. Um, you know, the last time I probably felt like this was was in college. Um, and so so I'm excited. Who made you feel up? Uh Brad Shep, you know what I'm saying, to start and now now coach unsailed as we started to start to build a rapport. I mean, it, it's no secret, right? Like my NBA journey's been rocky. Um, you know, and and the Nets were great to me. Like this is not saying that they weren't, but in terms of being like, hey, like you're our guy, like this is this is going to go as far as Brad and you, you know what I'm saying, and the other vets take it. Like, that's a completely different conversation. And like, you know, well, we know it. you're really good. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. But like, give me, give me a little more juice there. Okay, last, last one for me. What's your least favorite part of the kitchen sink that they're throwing at their Least favorite part? Uh, today they're telling me after I get out of here with y'all, they want me to try to do a a three minute um fully submerged ice bath so doesn't sound fun yeah like like basically like chin down Why? so what do you have? oh well it's uh i think hormonal response or something like that it, let, let them break down the science and whatnot uh so we're gonna we're gonna roll the dice on that one and see I, i'll report back maybe tomorrow or something enjoy good luck thank you <laughs> Um, hey Spencer, coaches talk a lot about having a sense of urgency. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that you preach to the team that's really stood out to you so far? Um, I mean, I think uh, the accountability aspect of things, I think that's really important with a, with a young group um, and that effort isn't something that should be coached. You know I'm saying everybody should bring that every single day. Uh, that's just part of normal competitiveness. And then obviously if you already had that effort at a high level um, and your intentions are in the right place and you're accountable, then the rest of it's going to fall into place. Like basketball is an imperfect game. You know, it's it's a game where the best players maybe shoot 50%, which means they're probably missing over half of their shots. You know what I mean? So like, this is not a situation where you're expected to make uh, every single shot or not turn it over. Um, and so it really comes down to those other little nuanced things, like not having to coach effort, being accountable as a person when you do turn it over, do make a mistake. So uh, he's talked about those things. And I think it bodes well for us, especially being a semi-young group. Well, I see Quentin in the stream. His hand yeah, always... Let's let's uh, kick off uh, Zoom questions here, and we'll we'll go to Quentin. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening, Spence? Uh, so far in camp, is there one player that has given you like the most bump or like the most annoyance? Somebody that kind of just grinds your grinds your gears, but like brings the best out of you, maybe. Grinds my gears if it brings the best out of me. Um, Aaron Holiday's actually been on my team for the most part. Um, so not him, but I definitely really respect him as a defender. I've said that before. Uh, Pope, I think, is a great defender. Um, having to guard Brad every now and then is definitely difficult. Um, Kuzma likes to talk, but boy, that man can't guard me. <laughs> Jesus, it's, it's so dicey. It's so dicey. I try to tell him, like, bro, like, I'm, what, eight months removed from ACL? It's only going to get worse. Like it only gets worse. This this is this right now was your best bet, and it ain't worked out. Uh, that's all I got. All right, let's go to uh, Yaron. 
Hey, Spencer. Um, looking at you know what playing and then seeing Denny in a, in, a, in a day and a half. Uh, what have you seen from him so far? And, and I know there's talks of, of him being uh, more of a playmaker despite being you know a six nine guy. So are you seeing some of that already? Um, yeah, in the, in the portions that that Denny's participated in and, and the things that uh, looks like he can do, looks like he's a high basketball IQ guy. Um, and I'm looking forward to being able to, you know, play with another playmaker. Um, obviously, we have a lot of guys that have high basketball IQ. You look at the, you know, former Lakers that came over. They're all vets and, and you know, grizzled. And, and you got Aaron Holiday, Beal, and obviously Denny as well, all make plays. And so it's going to be fun to, you know, not have, not, not have too much predictability in, in what we do. Thanks. Let's go to uh, Neil. Spencer, um, there's a lot of talk uh, about, you know, being able to guard your man, you know, not necessarily have to rely on help defense is something that kind of plagued the team previously before you got here. I'm curious for you, you know, you pride yourself as a strong defender. What kind of mindset or mentality? And is that something that you just always have or that you can grow and try and develop to just, okay, I'm going to guard my man and I'm not going to let him get past me? I mean, I think that's another thing that just kind of comes down to competitiveness, number one, and also being in good condition. Um, you know, we're playing against the best offensive players in the world. Like, people are going to score, right? But it's about making it difficult, making sure that they're taking the shots that, you know, we want them to take, you know, tough, contested, low percentage shots. You know, and if they if they make this shot, then you got to shake their hand. I mean, obviously, like I said, they're the best players in the world. But I think it really just kind of comes down to competitiveness and, and being in shape and, and going out there and giving that effort. And, and the great part about, like I said, our camp so far is um, the effort has been high. And I think that's why, uh, you know, we've been doing some of these things at a, at a pretty good clip. Once again, we haven't been in any uh, real games yet, so we haven't tested it against um, our opponents. But, um, you know, if we do have that requisite carryover, then, um, you know, we, we should have a good chance this season. And, and we started to hear a little bit about, you know, the team dinner that you guys had a couple nights ago. To you, did that stick out to you? Was there anything that was like, yes, this is something that, you know, I've seen like winning teams do or good teams do, and this is something that's important for us to get off to a good start? Definitely. Um, you know, overall, I mean, team camaraderie is huge. Uh, I think some of the things that separate, um, you know, some of the teams in the league uh, beyond just talent are like, you know, things like confidence and, and togetherness and stuff like that are, are really big separators. Um, the was it 2018-19 yeah the team that I was on with the Nets that you know had like Dudley and D'Lo and all that stuff you saw the bench energy and all that like we really were kind of like this uh like spunky bunch that people didn't uh, expect a lot of but that energy and that togetherness like we had a lot of fun playing with each other um or playing together as a unit uh you know and, and I think that is what kind of carried us in in a lot of the you know ways that we were talent deficient you know so um, that, that's definitely big. And, and, you know, Brad gave a little speech that felt like MLK. So we're ready to go to war. Appreciate it. Thanks, Spencer. No problem. We're going to finish off with Christos. Hello, Spencer. Hope you're doing well. How good is the, the fit with the team so far? And what is your expectation chemistry-wise about this season? Um, I think the fit in terms of just being high character guys, great people, um, chemistry so far has been great. Um, how we feel on the court, I mean, th that's an evolving process, right? The NBA uh, season's 82 games, like we got it, we're going to be tested. Like we're not going to go 82 and 0. No team ever has. Excuse me, sorry. Um, so that is something that, you know, seems good right now, but we got to continue to do it and go through the fire. We're going to be tested when we lose a couple games in a row, you know, and, and how do we bounce back from that? And if we have injuries or we have, you know, a trade or we have, you know what I'm saying? Just things that go on during NBA season. Like that's when all that stuff is going to be tested. But in terms of just like high quality individuals, high character individuals, like we definitely have that. And I think that gives us a good chance. Um, and then, you know, the eight, nine, 10 guys that, you know, we roll out every night um, in the rotation. It's, uh, it's, it's on us to prove coach right in terms of him choosing those guys to, to play. And also about you, do you have do you feel that you have something to prove this season with the Wizards? Um, yes and no. Um, I mean, I want to prove the Wizards right for uh, you know, 
bad on me coming off this injury and, and, and things like that. I think um, in terms of what I've done in this league, like uh, it's been pretty special. Um, the last, I would call it three seasons um, of my career. Uh, I think I've gained the respect of my peers in a lot of ways. So uh, there's a lot of peace in my heart in terms of the type of basketball player I am and what I can bring to the table. So uh, there's not really much personally that, that I want to prove. Like I have goals and things, but um, most of this around, and, and again, like I know people have asked this before as well. Like there's also no like uh, personal vendetta against Brooklyn. It's not the same as like the Detroit situation where I really wanted to go back and win and prove myself. Cause I still kind of held certain feelings towards that at the time. Like this really is about, like I've said before, like proving the Wizards right, getting to the playoffs as a team, getting Brad to sign the Supermax. Like those are probably my, my top three things on, on what I want to do. And the rest will kind of fall into place. And if we have team success, um, I mean, you become just everybody gets paid. You become a, just a more attractive destination. Like we're in a major city. Like there, there's no reason we shouldn't be an attractive place for free agents and, and things like that too. So, you know, team success kind of uh, is the gift that keeps on giving.